How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and this is a special request RPG Maker MV tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to do a tips and tricks video on how to make an evolving skill. I'm going to just show, show it to you very quickly. Um, so the idea behind this is a skill that gets stronger the more you use it and also where you can use a switch like to, to enable a switch to add extra features to a single skill. Uh, throughout the game. So maybe you meet a wise sage and he grants you this power and it improves the the skill by giving it a damage over time effect added in on top of initial damage or a heal over time effect on top of initial damage. This is a special request tutorial brought to you by Toronto Gaming and all my patrons on patreon.com. So I've created a skill for this example. This is a template uh, you're going to change it to make it much better than mine, but here's an example. We're using a skill called Evolving Fire, and this is its base level. At the beginning, it just does a little damage. It's all it's going to do. Um, but as you use it, the skill gets stronger. So every time I'm using it, it's adding to a variable and increasing the strength of that skill. Um, I've sped up how fast you gain skill to make it so that you can already notice that I hit twice with that last one. So I'm giving 10 points every time he uses a skill. In your game, you probably slow it down quite a bit, so it takes longer to improve the strength of your skill. But used it twice. We used it th or that's four times now. It's hitting twice now. Uh, after we get past a certain point, uh, which will be now, it'll be it'll hit. It'll go to its third um, iteration. The animation gets longer. More sound effects are added, and plus it does more damage. And it's also getting stronger. The damage formula is improving every time you use it so that the skill itself is also dealing more damage for each hit. Uh, and so it's evolving the more you use it. It started off with a smaller animation in one hit. It went to a slightly longer animation uh, with two hits and then, you know, a, a relatively long animation with three hits. But say you meet this wise, wise sage and... Um, you have you're given the choice do you want to evolve your skill to do extra damage over time or maybe you want it to do a heal over time um, you can toggle all of these with a switch let's let's say we chose the heal over time uh, and so when we use our skill now it's still already powered up to the third level and we can see so it's gonna hit three times but you'll see that it added a state and we're using a state animation as well to illustrate that um, we're getting a regeneration effect happening. So at the end of every turn, it's regenerating some health, um, which you can change the numbers. I've set it to five plus um, initial skill. Uh, and uh, you'll see the damage formula. I'm going to put all of the code in the description. Actually, there's brackets, so I can't put it in the description. I'll, I'll make a post. I'll, I'll comment in the comments below. And I'll copy paste all of the state code and the action sequence and all of the things and, and I'll pin it to the top. So if you want all the code for this, um, you can get it in the in the the comments below, not the description though. Let's say we meet the sage later on in the game and we've already powered it up once and he's like, I can unlock the full potential and now you've got both of the empowerments on your skill. So it's been it's set up to max deal the, the max damage. Um, it's still gaining numbers as you use it, uh, but now it does a damage over time and a heal over time. So you can see what's happening here is I'm using the skill it's, and then it's dealing damage. We have state animations for the damage over time, state animations for the heal over time, and then of course it just shows the state uh, on them. You can change all of these animations. You'll have to make your own animations. And to be honest with you, making the animations for all for the skill is going to be the most time consuming part because the rest of it at this point for you you're just going to be copy pasting code most of the time um so you're going to have to spend time on your own animations to to make them what you want also you'll pop your own creativity on it and make it a little bit different here a little bit different there and then you decide where you turn on the switches um so yeah that's the skill if it's interesting to you let's uh, stick around and i'll show you how to do it so you're going to need plugins, Core Engine, Battle Engine Core, Action Sequence Packs, Buff States Core, um, and Visual State Effects if you want the animation to be looping when you have a state on you. I th it's pretty much plug and play. You'll have to do one thing. In fact, let's look at the states first. You'll have to do state animation and then put the number of the animation. So that's it for that. 
this code, I don't need to go through all of it because it's quite a bit and I've got several places where I'm gonna be going through the code, but I will put a, a copy paste of all this code inside the, um, the comments below. So you can copy paste all this code. Uh, basically what's happening is we're using the buff states core to set up some uh, values, um, create a new uh, prototype uh, of target, and then set it to itself or a formula. You can change the formulas here. This is the regeneration one. We're showing an animation when you do the regeneration. We're giving the hit points, starting to pop up and clearing the result. And we're doing the same thing for this one, but this one is dealing damage. So we're dealing, here's our damage formula. To change things, all you have to do is mess with the first uh, variable definitions. I've set it up so you don't have to go into the code really. You can say, I want to change the percentage that's healed by however much percentage. Uh, the number that you, the variable you use for the skill level will be different, I'm sure, so you would just change this number, and then the animation you want to play is right here. Very, very easy to copy-paste this and then change the, the VAR definitions. Uh, the damage formula for the DOT is right here. You can change that up. The skill uh, that's which being used is there. And since we're using a variable, we have to initialize that variable. So create an auto-run event on the first map of your game and then set, uh, do a control variables and set the value of whatever variable you're gonna, you're gonna use for this skill. When you're making an evolving skill, you have to dedicate one game variable to keep, uh, to memorize where it's at uh, and, and, uh, and whatnot. And this is called initialization and you have to do this for, for some of these variables. Otherwise your damage formula will do zero no matter what you put in it. And you're like, I don't understand why it's just doing zero. Probably because you didn't initialize your variable but it could be other things like a typo, etc. cetera. Um, so like I said, this is auto run. We're gonna be using two switches, but you can actually add as many switches as you want. We're keeping it simple with just two times it can be empowered and do more cool stuff. So ignore the rest of this. This is, uh, the rest of this is set up so for other stuff. And this is gonna be a project that gets bigger and bigger. But right now we're looking at setting a variable and um, initializing the switches. Initializing variable, one variable and two switches. So just set the switches to off. They're off by default, so sometimes you don't have to initialize switches. I do anyway just to remind you that these are two things you're going to need. One variable, two switches, got it, moving on. Um, you're gonna make sure you do, when you set up your initialization phase, that you do a control self switch A on, you create a new page, and then you set the requirement for the second page to say self switch A on. So when, once you turn on the self switch A, this action button will run. So once again, you don't need this, this just have it blank and do the trigger of action button, because you want nothing to happen after you've, after you've declared those variables, right? I think that's clear, okay. Let's look at the skill itself, the main thing, the main event. On this left-hand side, you're gonna do, set it up however you want, icon, name, description, cost, whatever skill type. The scope is specific because we're using target action. You need to set this to one enemy. Um, it'll have not the right results if you set this to anything else. Um, occasion, whatever you want, battle screen obviously would be the best thing, right, since it's a damaging one, but the rest of it's all up to you, but the only thing that, that's required is scope and um, HP damage, and then the element's up to you. Uh, formula here, it's also up to you, but there is one part of it that you'll have to include if you want it to work the same way. You have to add the game variables in here. So we're saying the damage formula for this base is 100 plus the attacker's magic attack times 4 plus the value that's stored in variable 10 for the game variable. So dollar sign game variables dot value and then put the number of the variable, not the number you want it to be because that's going to be what's stored inside the variable, right? So we're looking at game variable 10 that we're changing. So we're right. Hopefully you guys follow with that. Variance, variance and critical, it's all up to you if you want to do that. Let's look at the actual action sequence. And once again, I'm going to copy paste this and pin it inside the comments so you guys don't have to like worry about typos and whatnot. Um, at the beginning, we're doing a display action for our setup action. We're displaying it so it shows the name and we're changing the variable 10. So whatever you put in here is also the one you're going to put right here. For your game, you're probably going to want to use plus equals one. So every time you use the skill, it goes up one level. I set it to 10 for the purpose of demonstrating in a quick fashion. So you'd set that to one. So every time you use it, it's going to increase it by one. 
Also, the next thing we're going to do is make sure that the skill can't become too overpowered, so we're going to put a soft cap on it. We're going to say if that variable is greater than 100, greater than or equal to 100, then we're going to run an eval and set that variable to 100. So once again, you'll change this number, this number, this number, and this number to match up with the variable that you're using for that skill. If you're using multiple skills that use this template, then you would have a different number right there in those four places for all of those skills. Um, after the setup action, we're doing a target action. And right here, we're setting up uh, the condition to see what phase are we in. Had, is the skill strong enough to get its, its um, um, it has, is the variable high enough to get the strongest skill? If so, uh, then we do an animation, wait for that animation, do three action effects. You can do wait a particular number of frames, wait and then, uh, and then action effect, and then another wait for a certain amount of frames, and then an action effect so that it's like, dish, 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 instead of, um, it does all the animation, and then da, 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 it's all three. So um, the reason why I went with this simple method is because it's going to work right out of plug and play uh, for you. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be timing it based in, based on uh, basting based on how uh, long your animations are. So me giving you something very specific on timing won't really help you if you don't have the exact animations I made and whatnot. And it's just trust me, make your own animations and set up your own custom timing. If you don't want to set up custom timing, just copy paste the code and do it like that so all of them hit at the end uh, like that. You could also use the damage core in tandem with this to make it more complicated if you wanted to have it do different damage formulas for each phase. So that's another um, thing that you could include, but I figured this is enough complexity. Um, so anyway, continuing on, if it's not past greater than equal level 60, See if it's greater than or equal to level 30. If so, do the same thing, but play a different animation. So this is where the animation changes on the target. And only do the action effect twice, because whenever we call action effect, it's going to issue the damage in the damage formula. And then for the final one, else we don't need to do another if, because this is the default. This is like what is going to happen if the skill is was 1 or 0, or at least not 30 to 60. Um, it's going to do the action animation, wait for that, and then issue the damage a single time, and then it's going to end. So that's that's its own that's its main thing. But then we have these extra. If you've met the sage and empowered your your skills, then you have these standalone. So we're checking. We're using this pseudo programming language inside the action sequence core, um, the action sequencing packs to. Um, run evals and do code based on conditions. It's a very, very cool pseudo programming language, the action sequencing. And, and I think it, once you learn how to use it, you can do so much with it and it's fantastic. So I'm using some pseudo code here. It's using a combination of JS and uh, action sequencing code. Yenfly is kind of like own programming language. If game switch is one equals choose, so I've decided I'm gonna use switch one and switch two, but if you use different switches, you're changing this number right there. And then we're playing that animation on the target. We're waiting for it to finish. And then we're going to do some JS here. So whenever you want to do JS inside of an action sequence, you start it with eval colon space. So once you do an eval colon space, everything that's on that line is going to be read as an evaluation. It's going to be basic JS. So we're going to just add a state to the target. And we're adding state number 13. So when you make your states, um, just keep in mind what number they are because you're going to have to call them here. And then we end that conditional. We, we basically copy paste this, but it's even more simple for the regeneration. If the switch two is on, if the heal over time switch is on, basically, then we're going to say eval user add state, the regen fire uh, regeneration thing. So we're adding state 14 to the user and that's the end. That's the end of the target action. You can get more fancy with it. You can make the target immortal if you want them to just, um, die um, if you want all three to hit even if the first hit of the three would have killed him I don't know if you know what that means but um, you can you can get further you could take the skill even further but it's already you know complex enough and I think it's a really cool skill it's a nice suggestion the idea of the skill was um, suggested by Toronto gaming and he's backing me on Patreon. And if you'd like to support what I do here, consider backing me on Patreon. Um, I believe that is everything. L let's go over the animations real quick. The hardest part of this for you, uh, since you have this copy-pasteable code, is going to be making your own animations. So you're going to need a few animations, right? For every time you want your skill to get stronger to the next level, you'll need an animation to change. You don't necessarily have to do that, but you have the ability to do that. So here's the first animation. 
you can see that. And then as it levels up, it gets past level 30. The player's used it like 30 times. It lasts a few a few frames longer. It also has this little kick to the right, like boom, boom. And so it's just a little bit longer. And then here's the longest version. It has the most frames. This one is 40 frames. And this is its boom, boom, and it's still going. And it has even more sound effects too, because it's the final version. So those are the, the three iterations of the basic skill. This is the damage over time effect, very short, because you're gonna see it a lot. So you don't want it to be long. That one's just 13 frames with a couple of um, sound effects. And then here's the regeneration. We wanted this to be also kind of short, not too intrusive, like kind of the light sound effect. So our regeneration sound, uh, animation right there. And then we have our state animations. These are gonna be, you're gonna use the batch and you're gonna se select all of the frames and cells and scale them down to 25%. And then, so you can barely see it. You wanna barely be able to see them inside this animation editor. And the, for the state uh, animations, you wanna have no flashes, no sound effects, just the uh, loop, a very short looping animation. That's for the fire regeneration. I like this one in the placement because it looks like the fire is coming out of his hands and it looks really cool in game. And then here is the burning effect um, for when the, the enemy has the damage over time on him. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Give this video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like these sort of uh, tutorials and this content and more will be made um, based on people backing me on Patreon. So um, I'm going to just kill him one more time with the skill to show it to you one more time but that's it for this video love you guys very much thank you for coming uh i'd like to see you guys in the discord it's a great place to uh advertise your stuff also if you like us to play your game that's a reward for the 20 dollar tier on our patreon um or you can get it done for free we made a bot we coded a bot in the discord and you can interact with that bot earn points and with those points you'll be able to um basically get first impressions for free. Play our game, interact with us, hang out with us, and we'll invest time in you as well. You can also use the self-promo channel to advertise your stuff. Um, it's a really good place to do that. Uh, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. See, I changed it to one. So it's taking a long time to power up because I changed the number to one. It'll have to hit him 10 times to power up. Forgot to put it on 10. Bye-bye.